Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. What is an assisted living? Um, that is the question that we are here tonight to find out. What is an assisted living? It's a social model. It's a residential social model. It's not a medical model. It's a social model. And it is designed to meet the individual needs of those who need minimum help with activities of daily living. And what that means is because it's a social model, there the nurse is not able, because of guidelines in Massachusetts, to be able to provide the hands-on nursing care that you would get in a nursing home. It's purely social activities. It's got meals. It's got oversight. It also provides people to have safety during the winter time and at other times when they're not safe at home. So it, it again, you've got to think of it as a social model, lots to do, people to connect with, lots of activities, and a fun place to be. In Massachusetts, there are three different models. We have the independent, which is just that. There are some standalone independent models where people receive no help with personal care, they are completely independent. We have the traditional assisted living, and then we have the memory impaired unit. And places like Carriage House offers a blended community of independent and traditional assisted living, which is really very nice because it allows people, as Dixie said, to be able to stay in their apartment and age in place, where some of these other communities between the independent and the traditional, oftentimes you need to move from one community to the next. Um, the Avita here, their memory loss, has, is really a very good memory loss unit. Their programs are geared and designed for the seniors with the memory loss. They are able to tailor the programs to the needs of the individual on the unit at all times. Um, for anybody, I've, we've been down to the Avita um, unit, and it's very cozy, very warm. Um, people can walk through the unit and see different things. There's a very nice area to sit, watch some television, socialize, and engage in conversation. So they really do a very nice job here in their memory unit, as well as their blended community as well. Um, so that's any, does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Okay, next I'm gonna to try to help you how to find a good assisted living. As you think about an assisted living for your relative or yourself, um, you need to think about the following. Are they social and engaging or quiet and shy? Do or did they have many friends in a large social network? What are their favorite foods? What is their personal style? Small, large home? Did they like glitz? Did they like finer things? The reason I say that is every senior has a different feeling of comfort. Um, I know an example, my mom, where after my dad passed away, liked her chair with her light where she could sit and read. She got a little bit away from a lot of socialization. She liked the quiet. She liked company. She'd like occasionally to go out for lunch, but she was never going to be a bingo lady, and she wasn't interested in a lot of activities. That won't change if they weren't very much um, into the social atmosphere, but that's okay because a lot of seniors are comfortable in their own way. So you really need to go and look and see if it fits. And a lot of seniors, they love to see the glitz and they walk in and they see these gorgeous rooms and the first thing they think of is money. So they need to be part of the planning because they need to understand if they're not gonna be in their home and the home is being sold, that money is being used for them to be able to stay. 
And I think that as people age, their needs and their wants, they tend to want less. So I think you really do need to know that it feels right. And Debbie always says it's kind of like for a woman, that black dress. When you go in and try it on, you know when you've got the right one. And I think it's important to compare facilities because peop everybody's needs are a little bit different, what they like and what they don't like. And so you've got to make sure that it just feels right. The staff needs to be attentive um, and be able to answer questions. Um, but it is. The, there are so many assisted livings to choose from at this point. There's many in Sudbury, Wayland, Framingham. You name the town and there's an assisted living. So you have to go in and compare and be a good consumer and find out which one's just going to feel right, which one's going to fit, which one looks right, which one's also going to meet the needs of my relative, how close it is to other family members. Um, you know, how much of a drive is it going to be? What is the size of the apartment? And downsizing can be good. Um, there's no need to take care of that eight room house anymore. Make life easy and simplify it. As you go on tours, it's important to ask the same questions on every tour. That way you really have a good comparison. And we often find bringing a checkoff list with the same questions to each facility is important. Otherwise, you start talking, and before you know it, you haven't asked the same questions, and you really can't compare apples to apples at that point. But ask the staff, staff ratio. Um, they are different at many of the facilities. What is it in the independent, which usually there's no assistance in the independent? What is it in the traditional model? How many hours do you usually get? In the traditional, sometimes you'll get 45 to 60 minutes. But in the memory, it's often um, you get unlimited help with personal care. But what is the staff ratio there? Um, what is, do they do quarry checks? Do they do, um, a quarry check is to make sure that there's no criminal background. So do they do the background checks on people? Um, 90, 100% of the facilities do, but you just want to make sure you may also want to ask, do they do it just upon hiring, or do they do it on an annual basis? Because people change jobs, or sometimes people work in two places, and a lot can happen year to year. Um, what is the cost? You need to know that. That's important. And you need to compare that across the other assisted livings as well. Look at the menu and the meal times. Are they assigned seating? Is that going to be better for your relative? Uh, is it better for them to sit with the same people at every meal? Or are they social and can go into a dining room and they'll talk to anybody wherever there's an empty seat? So it has to, again, feel right. What happens if they're feeling ill? Can meals be brought into the apartment? Or they're not very social people and they've always watched TV at night watching the news. And do they want to continue to do that at night and have their meals in for supper time? Is that allowed in the facility? And then again, what is the extra cost? Look at the activity calendar. Um, are there activities that may be in, of interest? And again, as Linda said, people who've always stayed, never played bingo, never came out to groups, never did volunteers, often are not going to begin to come out to activities. Sometimes they will, sometimes they may come out just to socialize and maybe over time they'll go listen to the music and sit in the back row and then begin to get a little bit closer. But you want to look at the activities. If they've always been a volunteer, if they've always joined groups, is there enough to keep them busy? That's the other side of that. And again, depending upon which unit they're on will depend upon the amount of activities. Oh, me again. Here are some other questions. Medications, how are they dispensed? Um, there are different programs that are established here in Massachusetts. And so you need to know if the aides can dispense the medications. Can, is there any medications that a nurse can give for an extra cost? How are they brought in? Is it the family's responsibility to fill a pill box? There are a number of pharmaceutical companies that bring in bubble pack, so you don't have to be called on a snowstorm or there's an antibiotic and you're sick or away on vacation, and somebody needs now a new medication, an increase, or they need a, new, a medication due to an infection. So you want to ask about how are they dispensed and how often, um, what happens in an emergency. How often is there a change in the cost? Um, you know, this is a business. 
and you are, this is on a month by month rental basis, how often can they raise the rent? Is it yearly? Is it mid-year? Um, because as we know, wherever you rent, um, th things go up every year. Um, is there someone available 24-7 for emergencies? And again, it will depend upon the unit. In an independent, there's usually somebody, there may be one or two people. In the memory unit, you're going to find more people. What happens if somebody's not sleeping at night, wakes up? Who's going to help them get back to their room, maybe give them something to eat? What is the staff, again, at night, and what is the role of the person at night? Um, Ask about the role of the nurse. We all know that nurses can give injections and they can give pills. However, in Massachusetts, it's a little bit more specific. Their role is defined more specifically here in an assisted living. When, they became, when assisted livings became established oh, about 15 years ago, they were, it was a time where the nursing homes were very nervous that assisted livings were going to step on their toes. And so at that time, the lobbies of the nursing home were very strong at the state house and were very specific about the role of the nurse in the assisted living and what she or he can or can't do. So you really need to understand in each facility um, what their role is because they're not able to check blood sugars. They're not able to give an injection if somebody needs a B12 shot. So you've got to understand who's going to take over if they still have some medical needs. Do physicians come into the building? And again, for some people, they still want to go out and see their physician, and that works well. For some people, as they age in place, maybe it's getting more difficult. And does the um, facility offer that if the time ever came? Do podiatrists come into the building? And again, you know, it just makes life a little bit easier than taking someone out. And what is the policy if there's a complaint? Um, no place is perfect, as I say to everybody. Nobody's perfect. No marriage is perfect. I fight with my sister. We love each other, but we have fights. How do we solve the complaints? Um, and that's very important because something's going to happen at some point that may be a little bit upsetting or you may hear from somebody. And how do they solve that? That's the important piece. Um, sometimes what, you, what we suggest is, you know, ask them their policy. And if you happen to see somebody maybe in the parking lot, ask them, you know, if there's a complaint, how did they solve it? Were you happy with the way they took care of it? Because complaints, they just come up. When you're living in a community with about 80 or 90 people, something's going to get a rise. And so don't get upset about it, but just figure out how to solve it.